Alright, I will hold the microphone for you. Are we at time? Yeah. Start? Yeah, we're Alright, status when you are ready. Hold microphones. Uh, that is Boozy's beer, so yes, that could just go into the thing. Uh, AV, all mics. Thank you guys so much. Before we get going, give a huge round of applause for AV, who's been helping me out. Thank you all so much. Show the show you know you'll love. We hope you stick around for the madness because we got all sorts of surprises coming your way. You'll hear of them all if you decide to stay. Welcome to the Dragon Show. We got tons of laughs in there. Screaming for 10,000 votes and we're almost there. When we reach you, we'll go. Pull it Thank you so much to Status. Before you go, there is something we wanted to talk to you about. Because we're the Dragon Show. That is Dragon and Ferret together. I'm Alkali. I'm Zanny. And who's not here? Yay! But Status, before you go, we just wanted to talk about something because you produced an album this I did. Week. Can we talk about that a bit? Yeah, we can absolutely talk about that. Uh, there's copies in the back that you can buy that are $10. I worked incredibly hard on it. Uh, it's literally been in production since I was 15, and I'm so excited to finally have it out, and it's <laughs> incredible. And I'm so incredibly speechless with all the amazing support, and so much of it has come from the Dragon Show, and I cannot thank them enough for all of their amazing support. So We cannot thank you enough for your amazing support. You wrote our theme song. You are insanely talented. And your DVD, your CD made me cry on an airplane to the point where they brought me extra booze. So that was nice. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, give it up for our good friend, a friend of the Dragon Show and of the convention. Give it up for Status It is. Well, go ahead. Uh, uh, that table, the Dragon Show table, is going to show up randomly in this room when I'm performing uh, as a deal between myself and the con chairman because we kind of screwed up my dealer's table because I can't fill out paperwork properly. Did you know the number zero is less than the number one? What a country. So, yeah. Uh, that table will be around. Those DVDs will be around. Yes, you will be able to purchase at a later time. If you're looking for Phoenix, one from me specifically, you can find me on everything at Status Ferret, and we can talk, and I can get one to you. One more time for Status. <laughs> All right. Without further ado, hello, I'm the Dragon Show, the Dragon Ferret together. I am Zanny. This is Alkali. I'm not here. And this, oh God, where are we? We're at Indie Fruit Con. Yeah. Wow. Tired. Leave it to Sandy. It's like, hi everyone, welcome to Where the Hell Am I? <laughs> that might have happened due to last night. Uh, we we don't we don't pull punches about ourselves, so we're both on a tea break right now. Uh, we realized when looking at our stash of homegrown weed, staring into the depths of the bucket and thinking there used to be significantly more weed in there. Maybe we should take a break. And one of the things that happens to you on breaks, Zanny, you want to explain? Yeah, we've been going a little hard, so. Uh, one thing that happens is, well, you just stare at the ceiling and you can't go to sleep and your eyes just, and just, you're energized. I could not go to sleep last night at all. I could not figure out what, I was like, oh yeah, the weed. <laughs> now, that's how I was woken up from a dead sleep. 
yeah. dreaming about, dreaming about, I don't know, probably weed. Huh? And all of a sudden, I am jolted awake by them. It's the weed! <laughs> it is? Where? <laughs> is it the weed, Ken? The, oh. Yeah, right? Oh. The weed right. Ken is next weed Ken. Yeah, right? No, it's it's rough. I mean, has anyone in here ever tried to just like cut back? Like, who here has ever quit cigarettes? Did you guys do that? See, now that's a real feat. It's an addictive, an actually addictive substance. Cannabis is only mentally addictive. You're not physically addictive. There's no chemical. It's just your brain going, you know, it'd be great right now. Anything but this with weed. <laughs> and that's just your every single thought. So I'm sitting here, guys, and like, oh, good, I need to get ready for my performance. And all I need is to comb my hair, put on my deodorant, and smoke this joint. No, that is not something I need to do right now. I just need to smoke this joint. No, that is not something I need to do right now. But this bong will help me to. Uh, <laughs> Oh, it's just non-stop. It's non-stop! Here comes the depression gremlin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you leave the depression goblin alone! Oh, oh, I'm coming back! Ah, ah. No, that's a cobalt. Oh, that's, there is no depression cobalt. Oh. The depression cobalt goes to the store for paper towels and comes back with chainsaws. That's not depression, that's love. <laughs> chainsaws! Stop we have what? Alkali says if he, if he sent me out for paper towels, I'd come back with chainsaws, which I can't disagree with, honestly. That sounds like something I would. We had company over. We were having a small dinner party. We were out of an agreement, an ingredient, and I said, Zanny, would you mind going to the store to pick up X? I don't need to tell you what X was, because here are the items Zanny brought home. One Fuji apple with a bite taken out of it, bitten by them, which is fine. A bottle of hand soap, very not good for cooking, but good for washing dishes. And also, dishes! I didn't need saucers, but a whole stack of them. Why? They were on sale, and I was proud. <laughs> they were on sale, and you brought them away. I'm so happy. I want to correct you, because all I needed was some mayonnaise, because I'm white and American. If you're going to the store for me, buy mayonnaise. That's how it works. Good to know I could just justify everything with, I used a coupon. <laughs> okay, I don't like that that's true, but it's very true. <laughs> hey, Zanny, I brought home uh, Oreos. What happened? They disappeared. <laughs> Fast. Oreos were on sale, and Zanny was so angry. Like, you don't need those. We're on a diet. I said, I know, but they were on sale. And Zanny goes, that's not a reason to buy something. You Oh, they're really good at milk. Aren't okay, <laughs> I, I, I have to say something. Whoever at Oreo designed the new package that like opens from the top is a, is a monster. Because you just feel like Attack on Titan on a, like attacking a church. You're like, rip on the door. Like, ah, oh, just not gonna grab a ton. <laughs> I'm just saying. So You're like, are a monster, and I love it. Play the bird for cannibalism. Yeah, Texas people. Look, it's been known to happen. <laughs> so, uh, three days ago was my 40th birthday. Woo! <laughs> I don't know if that's applause worthy. Everything hurts. So, one of the things that I accidentally purchased because I just grabbed. When you see a sale on Oreos, you stick out your arm and you see what falls into the cart. <laughs> and one of them were birthday. Oreos. Oh, God. They were at the bottom of the stack, and we reached the bottom of the stack on my birthday, to which Zan painted such a beautiful picture. Zan, how did you assume you were going to find me on my 40th birthday? Alone in the garage, just with five Oreos in his mouth. <laughs> Oreo birthday cake. It's just like it's just a commercial, you know? Ah, oh, I'd be a terrible marking. <laughs> I love that most of our jokes is, what can we say to the other to depress us to a level where we're still in love? Oh, that works. That's, that's perfect. <laughs> oh, we're terrible. Glug, 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 glug. So I've been drinking life. for like half oh, a day already. I guess. We're, changed, guys. we're not allowed, court order. <laughs>
40 years now, I don't think it's going to happen. Well, something's changed. You know that, that, what's it called? You can't teach an old, old dog new tricks. Well, you can't teach a gay mutt to hop something else. I like this one. Oh. 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 <laughs> Love is in the air! Oh my god! Love is in the air! Oh my god! Love is in the air! Love is in the air! My father asked about my show. So if you don't know, uh, right before all this happened, back at MCFC, literally at MCFC, uh, I was fired from my career that I have been in since I was 16 years old. It's all I've ever known. Uh, which also means that all I've ever known is a job that was literally just sucking the life from me and every one of my friends could see it, but I had a paycheck blinding me, so I, I let it happen. And about a week after being unemployed and doing the Dragon Show, I realized the quality of life was so different that this is what I want to do. I want to perform. I want to do this show. And I've been really enjoying it to the point where I'm not going to lie to my family. When they ask me what I do, I tell them, waitress. <laughs> and then I come clean and I tell them that I have a small podcast that's got a small following. We have some fun. My dad accepted this. He did not like it, but he accepted this. And this last weekend, I went over there for my birthday and my dad goes, Well, you know, if at some point uh, you wanted to tell me where I could tune into the show, and my very first thought is of the brand new Twitch Points level that we put out, <sighs> Love is in the air. <laughs> I don't know how much I'm comfortable with my father tuning in and us going, Did somebody just spend a hundred made up points? Let's make out for five minutes. Oh, are we kobolds? Let's perform four on each other's noses. <laughs> yeah, I don't need that in my life. <laughs> so my dad goes, Can I see the show? I go, I got a lot of reruns. <laughs> Audio only? Absolutely, you can see my. He goes, that's wonderful. So I gave him the best of. The best of the Dragon Show episodes 1 through 100. Oh, no. That was a week ago. <laughs> I have not talked to my father in a week. <laughs> I did talk to my brother, though, who told me, our father is concerned. <laughs> And I said, oh, was it the contacts? He's like, no, I don't know what he's concerned about, but he does want you to start drinking more? <laughs> like, well, that's true love. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. It was nice, though. Oh, it was yeah. nice. I, I very rarely get to see my brother and my father. They are very different people from me. And everyone, you got to sit next to me while I had a conversation with my brother on the phone. Yes. That was, yes. That was new territory for you, wasn't it? I'll say. Our, our families are a little different. Sam, would you like to do your side of a conversation with your brother? What was all, that? all quotes, nothing but goddamn oh. movie quotes. But sp movie and Space Ghost quotes, that's all we talking. Yeah. That's it. The entire time listening to them on the phone, all I hear is them going back and forth with Space Ghost quotes, movie quotes, and it's adorable. My brother called me up and goes, hey! My wife left me, you want one of my kids? <laughs> what? No, not really. It's like, alright. Well, now that I threw that out there, how about you just watch them? I'm like, oh god, is this what I do to Zan? Because every time I need to ask them a bad question, I always throw out like, hey Zan, I just want to let you know. I crashed the car into a ditch and we're gonna starve to death tomorrow. And they go, oh my god, really? And I go, no. But we're not going to Indy for a con this year, I'm so sorry, and I run away. <laughs> because if the first one's really bad, and the second one's just bad, transitively, it's fine. It's fine. However, I will not be watching my brother's kids in our house, and I quote, I own a VR machine, I own an entire garage full of camera equipment and sound equipment, and there is porn hidden in 90% of the house. I don't need your kids here. To which my brother responded by, 90% of my house is filled up with Christmas trees that have not been put away, and I lost my porn a year ago. My kid hasn't talked to me. This is nothing new. See you at noon. <laughs> <sighs> So you're going to be an uncle. Oh boy. I hope not. <laughs> More like an aunt. 
Anyway. <laughs> my bad. We have, not, we have not had any sleep. It's okay. Oh my god. Uh, it's been kind of crazy here. Hello everyone, this is Dragon Show. We are sleep deprived and it's fun. Uh, <laughs> Wendigo, thank you so much. You, you gave these amazing presents. Oh my god. Uh, oh my these god. amazing, start off, these figurines. Uh, color, you colored them in my style with my hair, and uh, it's, they're so fucking cool. And I just wanted to my thank you so much. My eyes hate me. Was that? I said my eyes hate you. Oh, I yeah, yeah, I can yeah, imagine. Sanders' eyes hate him too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you have eyes like me. Congratulations. Yay. Uh, could you have me that book? Yeah. Uh, Briggs for my birthday, and thank you very much again, my friend. This is insane. A limited edition, 12 pins from D&D, all of them applicable in AR. There's an app that you can shine your cell phone on this in augmented reality, and it'll play a little 3D animation on your phone. Dude, this is so cool. I have been a D&D player, oh my god. I've been a D&D player longer than some of the people in this room have been alive. <laughs> oh, god damn it. <laughs> I've been playing D&D since a year after I played LARP. I actually was one of those weirdos who did LARP first and D&D second, which kind of changed the whole like, perspective on D&D, because the first time I played it, like, LARP, live action role play. Let's go play D&D in the forest and beat the crap out of your friends. Role play. Let's sit at a table and roll dice. So I was DMing like, okay, it's time for a battle. Let's go outside, grab a stick. <laughs> they didn't like that much. <laughs> Leave my lightning bolts alone. <laughs> well, that is really beautiful. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh man, I used to work for an AR company. That brings back memories and it's weird. I'll tell you what. I forgot That's about great. that. I did. That was one of my, one of my last weird gigs because like it it just operated on a hope and a prayer where it was just like yeah it was one of those companies where like some millionaire gave a bunch of money and we're just trying stuff and like we would come the boss would come to us and like we're gonna pitch this to that and that this so like one time they're like hey Zandy, uh this weekend uh you think you can work on the weekend uh it's really important okay what's up what's up we want you to make a animation of kanye west for kanye west like, what? <laughs> so that, that actually happened. I was sitting in my basement, having to animate Kanye West rap in front of the Chicago skyline, and he liked the animation that was just plug and play better, which is just, just like, take two seconds, because of course. Of course. Because of, of course. course. Why put effort into something when you can let a program do it for you? Exactly. Your job is meaningless. Oh yeah, I, I get that. That's brutal. That oh. was absolutely brutal. Hey, now in VR, yeah, just get someone in VR chat and do this. Uh, yeah, you got it. You got, you got animation. Yeah, you no, that's, well, that's the, like I had done. Uh, I was a, a desk clerk for years. I worked as commodities broker for years. And every once in a while, you'd get the person to say, "It's like, oh, your job is so hard. We could let a phone answering service do that." I'm like, that would be amazing. Press one to trade gold. Press two if you've <laughs> lost all your money. Press three if you've lost all your money. <laughs> Goodbye. Like that, that'd be yeah. the entirety of it. That's a matter of seconds. They can't automate that. Come well, on. But they want to, they'd be cheaper. Oh, of course. And that's how I feel about your job. Like, I saw your animation. The animation was immaculate. It looked so good. Projected through a phone. A phone shined at a table, and you looked through the screen, and on the table was the Chicago skyline and Kanye West rapping in front of it. And then I showed what what. It looked like the Lego movie if halfway through they stopped trying and just threw Legos at a goddamn camera. Like, yep, it's raining now! It's raining now! And that was, it was garbage. And the idea, yeah. the idea that that's what they chose due to price is just heartbreaking. Absolutely well, You know, hey, it, they are, it's weird. We all want our Princess Leia thing. I'm sorry, our princess. Oh, I'll be only one. You're my only hope. See, Ever since then, that's what AR is. It's so you can have that on your table. I oh, don't want that though. Oh. I play Shadowrun. Oh. If we get AR, I want to wear my glasses. I want to wear a contact lens. I want to be walking down the street, and I want a thing to show me. Oh my God! Buy one, get one free Oreos. Yeah. <laughs> It's all I want. <laughs> Sale is justification. Sale is absolutely, there's a reason to make AR. Imagine this, you're walking down the street. You're having a great day. 
Under your feet is the green line showing you how to walk to your house. As you're about to cross the street, your glasses light up until you don't move. You're about to get hit by a car. Amazing. And all of a sudden, as that car goes by, it alerts you. Also, that person is interested in you on Grinder. Holy crap, they're right here! This is what augmented reality is all about! Sales and getting laid. All of America is based around sales and getting laid. Capitalism and copulation. It's all we need. Are we gonna have a grinder set up where there's like all your potential things pop up and like get us like spinny spinny? No, it's gonna be like in The Sims. They'll wander around our house doing random things until they screw while one of our friends is playing chess. <laughs> the Actually, Sims is a weird game. The Sims, it's a weird game. Zanny, we we are could not be more different when it comes to video gaming. We could, uh, I am big time on RTSs, uh, even less than RTSs, but like strategy games, uh, world builders, uh, city skylines, by far my best game. And Zanny's playing like Super Beat Boy and these yeah, yeah. amazing platformers that visually stunning. I pick up a controller and I start peeing myself out of fear. I can't play this game, but we found it. A game we can play together. Why? Because we downloaded all the sex mods and half the time we just start the game, let it play, and start smoking and see what our other selves do. I'm a murderer! <laughs> yeah, that was quite the funny when I was realizing, hey, Alkali. I look like a little chubby on the belly there, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, you do. We can go in and edit the... Oh! Uh oh I so had they, some Bobby. They tried for Bobby. <laughs> to which Sandy goes like, wait a minute, so what happens here? I'm like, I, I've never played Sims 4 before. He goes, can, can we build a second floor? We need stairs. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, my favorite part is like, when I went into labor, I kind of acted like how I would, because I had no idea what to do. I would just sat there, and I took a nap. And it says, <laughs> in labor! The game? 45 minutes! I'm like, like, what the hell? The game had a hiccup, and apparently the pregnancy started at the exact moment they left for work, so the game didn't know what to do, so it just sent them home, and they wandered into the house, went to the bathroom, read a book, took a nap, and birthed a carriage. In the living room! Just, just the carriage. There's a little notice, like, the government has given you a carriage. Like, the government doesn't help you after you're born. They only care about you making your mom miserable until you're born, and then they give up on you. You can start then. That's fine. And we're just stand, sitting here like, all right. We have a baby now. What do we do? The question that we are fearful of having to be asked in real life. And Sandy's response was, can we build a closet? <laughs> like, do you mean a nursery? They said no. <laughs> Soundproofing is a thing with expansions. That baby didn't bother us until, <laughs> until Zan went to check on it and it was gone. Disappeared before my eyes. Right as they were clicking, the baby vanished, and the first response was, Thank God! Like, what? <laughs> Apparently, the game's authorities had come in and taken our baby. There was no option. There was nothing. The game announced, Your baby has been taken by Child Protective Services, and the baby vanished, which leads me to believe CPS are actually wizards. <laughs> Hear me out. That's why they work there. If you're a wizard, chances are you're not having a baby. You're wearing robes all the time. You've got bat guano in your pocket. Getting laid isn't really at the top tier of what you're doing. You can tell physics to sit down and shut the fuck up. That's a little bit better. So they vanished our kid. And what did we do? We immediately threw a party. In-game. Invited everyone over. And as you do these word bubbles, no words, word bubbles show up over their heads. And every single one of them had a word bubble show up with our baby's picture on it. Obviously asking us, oh, where's the baby? And our response was obviously due to the red X. CPS took it away! And that would
would have been fine until you realize how The Sims works. The Sims is based off of interactions. If they like your interaction, a green plus sign shows up. If they don't like your interaction, a red negative sign shows up. And as we told our friends that our baby had been taken away from every one of them, green triple plus, green triple plus, green triple plus, it is the furries! You understand? <laughs> oh, that game is ridiculous. The baby's been taken away by EA Games. Yay! <laughs> It just didn't have a program. Yeah, exactly. If they did that, they'd take it one limb at a time and you'd have to pay $200 each. It's not going to work out well for us. Oh. I can't What's wait that? for a game What's to show up later that? and be like, oh no, I made a mistake. Oh, I'm totally waiting for this thing to show back up. Yeah. I adore games like this because you never know what's going to happen. And one day, I just want somebody to show up at the door of our fake house like, ding dong, and the picture of the baby in the word bubble come again, and just them and me, all negatives. Like, no, no, you are not getting any money from us. We told you that. I put a roof over your house and I can make you vanish by a wizard. I just love, like, the conversation the whole time as I'm, as we knew that I'm pregnant. Like, okay. How are we gonna kill this baby? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We have a uh, robot lady, uh, Alexa, in our garage, so we know it's spying on us. Uh, that means the government definitely is listening into everything else we say from this point on. You cannot talk about anything in The Sims without the government freaking the hell out. On the other side of this, we record the Dragon Show next to that. The government is definitely listening to the Dragon Show. If you're listening to Mountain, you sons of bitches, buy something. You ask, you're getting this all for free. Love is not in the air, assholes! Give me money. Give me money. Love is in the air. Okay. Aww. Hey. 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 No Twitch points were, were caught. Okay. No oh, points. you're going to sell that to him? Okay, that's. <laughs> I will do it next time. Oh, jeez. technically government. Nice. You took our baby! I owe you one! <laughs> you beautiful, beautiful wizard! Wait, is it too early to do this time? <laughs> oh, God! I don't know how to feel about this right now! <laughs> is there a way to get a sign that says Daddy on it? I don't know how to feel about this right now. I hate you all. <laughs> 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 uh, what's up? You got it? Yeah, three minutes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, we want to introduce our first guest to the stage. You know them, you love them. They have been your con chairman nine consecutively for I legitimately don't know how many years at this point. Give it up for the one, the only, Lord Pantera! Hello, my potential Danny DeVito. <laughs> I'm, what am I, the Kirkland brand Danny DeVito? What yes. The, I do work for Costco. You're a little... <laughs> oh, geez. That's right, you, you can get me a gallon of tequila for a dollar. Help me out, buddy. Kirkland. Right. They Kirkland the price. It's like $1.99. Damn it. How will I get drunk now? Get a coupon. <laughs> I've tried repeatedly, <laughs> much to my amusement and their chagrin. <laughs> because then you can just show them it's like, hey, see this at the bottom? This is worth a hundredth of a cent. I'm gonna go to my car. You're about to learn that pennies aren't the worst thing you can be paid in. <laughs> oh. No, that's a joke. That doesn't exist anymore. That used to be a thing. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, uh, like actual yeah. value, one one hundred of a cent or something. See, I haven't looked and I haven't noticed it. Is it? Does anyone know? Is that still a thing? Yeah. Yeah. It depends on the coupons. Does it? Okay, alright, that's kind of. I, I really do. Again? In the fine print, you can see it, but you need like a super magnifying glass, so the government puts it on there. Yeah, that's just how. But you're blind. God, see, I just, just once, just once, I want to pay somebody in nothing but coupon stubs and just see what they do. Because they're going to say no. And they go, see the fine print? Like, I don't care about the fine print. Well, that means that coupons don't expire, doesn't it? Oh. Uh, 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 take my coupons. Yeah, I'm like, those are terrible. Don't worry, I wouldn't do that. That's a no, no. Do it here. I don't have to count the money here. I win. 
If you guys don't know what we're referring to, uh, BLFC, you got to go to BLFC with us. I, I want to go back. I, mean, I, I was there for the musical year. I was so good. Back again. Well, it got out of hand. Do you remember back on the musical year where a bunch of people donated the one to five cent coupons from uh, 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 gambling? There was the leftover on the slot oh, machine win. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so BLFC, the other they were. I, I run charity with them. I got a stack of these things. Have you ever played a slot machine? You know, they print out little tickets, so if you put in $20, you keep playing, you keep playing, and eventually you're down to two cents. There's nothing to do with two cents. You print it out, it's a two cent piece of paper, it's pointless. Unless, unless the convention chairman tells everyone to save them, to save every single piece of one to five cent pieces of paper, and hand them all to me at closing ceremonies. And I don't mean hand them to me. I mean, they had a money gun. Remember those things that just shoot dollar bills? Kind of like if the strippers wanted it to hail. I don't really. This oh, thing yeah. fill all over main event stage. All over the floor in front of main event stage. Slipping through the cracks on main event stage to the total tune, bear in mind, one to five cents. Hundreds of dollars put into a machine one at a time by myself in the car. And the staff of the hotel, the first time they walked past, like, oh, is that what you guys are doing? Good luck. The second time they walked past, having fun. The tenth time they walked past, when we still had a stack like this, like, hey, you know, we have a machine. If you finish that fucking sentence, if you are going to tell me that this whole time we could have just slid these through a machine, I'm going to kill. It's like, well, we could do that. But that broke like literally two days before you guys got here, and this person over here told us not to repair it. And their director of operations leans their head in, gives me a thumbs up, and runs. On the bright side, at least you can make it uh, rain on a, on a budget. <laughs> Without making it hurt, I mean. <laughs> That's true. That's true. You don't want to throw change at them. I, I, yeah, I don't like throwing change at people. <laughs> People have to potentially like throw it at me, and it gets horrifying. Dollar coins hurt, motherfuckers! <laughs> I believe they're called loonies. Looney Tunes? Only in your weird country would we have money called loonies and toonies. Yeah. How do you get away with that? This is money. It makes the world go round. It's the root of all that is evil, and you're gonna call it a toonie? I need to move. To the boonies? To the boonies. To the boonies. To the boonies. Let's watch Unis. Okay, I'm done. Sorry. Wait, at least we haven't gotten a Quintney yet. A what? A Quintney. What's a Quintney? Five dollar coin. I hate you. What's the biggest change, actually? Because you moved to the States quite a while ago. The biggest coin I've seen is the is the two dollar coin. That <laughs> no, I mean, not, not the biggest changes in coin. The biggest change in life. Oh! Going from Canada to America. Much less poutine. Much less <laughs> A lot less poutine. Exactly. Just down the street, there's some. Ooh. Culver's. Where? Oh, uh, do they, they have don't have poutine, poutine there. I thought they, it looked like they had. A they do in Wisconsin. I don't. I didn't know if they did here. I'll have to check. We, we will have to check that. Do, do you? Well, I mean, oh, it's migrated. It's yeah. migrated. Yeah. So I, I What's went to Culver's uh, the first night here, and, got, and I got a fish sandwich, and I always in in Ever Square. I get a fish sandwich and some vinegar, because they have packets of vinegar, because it's a very British or Canadian thing, fish with, with vinegar. Right. And I asked them, can I get some vinegar? They're like, oh, yeah, we've got a vinegar thing. So I get, I get back to the room, open up my fish sandwich, and with it is a packet of a salad vinaigrette. Uh, I'm like, oh, you're close, but you're so wrong. So very, very wrong. <laughs> now, you need to understand, uh, first squared, one year, the food prep decided to put poutine on the menu. <laughs> and then Pandez gave me a visit in operations. Pandez, what was your, imperson, what was your impression of the uh, Wisconsin poutine from First Square? I'm 
I'm trying to recall. Uh, I want to say it was good. Powder? No, it was powdered oh. watery gravy oh. and like sharp cheddar. Remember? Yeah, I was like. You were so, you were angry about the cheese curds most of all. I was like, this this is this is not the right cheese for poutine. It's got to be like a like a mozzarella kind of a thing, but yeah, sharp cheddar does not really go well with gravy and fries. I, see, I was just worried because I'm like, oh god, my Canadian representative is not happy with my representation of Canadian food. I better go! So I just told the restaurants, like, hey guys, uh, maybe uh, the, the poutine's really not working out too well. And I tell this, they pass this along to the chef, the next day they come back to me like, yeah, no, we understand what happened now. Like, oh, really? Like, yeah, they had never heard of poutine. They looked it up on Reddit. Oh. That explains that. Yeah. I can see that. When we run this podcast, we also have a Patreon. If you're at a certain level of the Patreon, you can ask us questions. So these are our question masters for the evening. Let's give it up for Peter the Bear. And by the way, that's at Patreon.com Dragon Show. Thank you. Peter the Bear asks our first question. Question for everyone. If you listen to podcasts besides the Dragon Show, what's your favorite podcast? Besides the Dragon Show? Besides the Dragon Show. I, I, We're barely a podcast anymore. We're just two idiots with our own a camera. Like, that's... I mean, the Dragon Show is the only one I currently listen to. I'm trying to think. There was one I listened to, like, ten years ago, but I can't even think of what it is. Really? Yeah, I used to listen to a lot of podcasts, and, you know, I mostly just, like, listen to video or streams now. And, but I, I, I used to listen to a lot of podcasts, and, uh, and I forgot the, the rest of that sentence, so that's good. <laughs> I have no sleep! This is terrible! So, you know, I'm trying to remember what I used to listen to. So I listened to a podcast called Small Town Murders. Does oh, anyone else oh. listen to that one? Okay, Small Town Murders is actually amazing. It's two comedians who do a deep dive into an actual murder. It's, a, it's one of those uh, 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 real crime shows. Uh, some of them are solved, some of them are unsolved. You never know what you're getting into. But it's done by two comedians, and watching their journey through the year has been epic. I mean epic, because they start off like, all right, we're going to do this small town murder, we're going to talk about some murders, and just want to let everyone know we're comedians, but we're not making fun of the victims. This is very important to us. We just need you to know that we care. And at this point, they're like, stop sending us hate mail. We don't care about you. These people died. We can't change it. We're clowns. Fuck you. Here's how somebody got murdered by a french fry. <laughs> okay, buddy, here we go. And it's so good. They get into these deep dives of the, oh, this town of 1,300 people. Here is the demographic of the town. Here's the average, the cost of a home in this town. They go into all this stuff. And then the weirdest, most horrific deaths, with one of them still being like, yes, and this happened, and here's the facts. And the other one just going like, oh my god, talk about a case of misunderstanding. And just goes off into the distance horribly making fun of every single murdered person ever in this show. And the other gentleman just trying to rein it in. And the show has never been about the murder. The show is about how horrible the second guy is. Ah. <laughs> also, how fucking stupid. <laughs> Because you haven't lived until you have a person who does not know the difference between a homicide and the side of the house where the murder happened. Like, okay, so it happened on the side of the homicide. So the side of the, no, homicide, it's a homicide. He died in a homicide on the side of the house. You can, it's like watching Who's on First with Murder. I highly recommend it. Small Town Murders. Nice. Small Town Murders is awesome. Yeah. I used to listen to a lot of, uh, like, Mark Maron and stuff oh, like that for it. Oh yeah, like all the way through. And I think that like the the peak of that was when he had Obama in his house. That was just weird. So <laughs> Mark Maron interviewed Obama in his house with the Secret Service on his roof. It was weird. <laughs> Mark Maron. Yeah, they even talked about it. Like you got a Secret Service guy on my roof, so that's fun. <laughs> yeah, because like, like there's a they had a sniper to look out or something. I don't know how the American government works. It's weird. The main character from GLOW had Barack Obama in his house with a sniper on his roof. Yep. God bless America. <laughs> what the fuck? Briggs Buckingham asks, thank you very much, Briggs. What Broadway play would you want to star 
slash be a cast member of. Oh, the apple. <laughs> It sounds like she just yeah, took it, right? Yeah. What the fuck? That movie was amazing. Dennis. Oh my god, no more Ben Bowers! Ben, I believe we all know that I would like to be the king from Hamilton. Yeah, I agree. You would make nice. an amazing king from Hamilton. Yes. Uh, I am a huge fan. That uh, Uncle Kage showed me the show a while ago, and it broke my brain. I got the chance to see it live recently. It is immaculate. The Gone Wrong Show. It is an entire show. Uh, all right, we have some fans in the audience. Wonderful, excellent. The entire show's premise is the personification of the show must go on. Mistake, and I'm not talking about just verbal mistakes. At the end of most shows, they have totally destroyed their set. We're talking about like Buster Keaton style. Uh, the final act of the live live presentation that I saw had three actors standing in the middle of the stage when all three stage sections fell in in perfect order, bam, 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 all of them standing where the window is, wow. missing the per This is the level that they do on stage, and I don't want to just be there because I think that would be an amazing performance to achieve. I don't want to be there because it looked like they were having so much fun. I want to be there because sooner or later, one of us would fuck up, and don't forget, the show must go on. What are they gonna do when I'm laying there with a concussion, talking about the Oreos that I just bought at home, singing myself happy birthday while complaining about a wizard stealing my child? Let's see what you do now, Ted! <laughs> the government wizard whisked away, is the that what you said? Oh. The government wizards your baby. The government wizards your baby? Oh, Jesus. Oh, I love that show. That show is very fun. If you had a chance, it's on Amazon Prime, I think. Uh, they have uh, two seasons. It's really something unique. I really enjoy that. Oh, you went. Tess Cat! Oh, I, ah, I fucked everything it? up. Uh, heart emoji, heart emoji, egg win emoji, and porn. Uh, yeah, I think you're on the wrong page there, bud. I don't think so. Okay, now you're there. Magic Jack asks... Thank you, Tess Cat. Oh, God. There's a raging inferno! Quick! What three things do you grab to save other than yourself? Also, hope this never actually happens. Good vibes only. <laughs> Tusk and Magic Jack, there's a raging inferno. Quick! What three things do you grab to save other than yourself? Sammy, what do you save? The house is on fire! Hurry! Hurry! I ran out. <laughs> Wait, I think I missed a point here. Oh, I forgot things! Sam <laughs> Sam just runs out of the house and waits for me outside. I love you so much. I love you too. Don't forget your chainsaws. Oh, yeah, don't forget your chainsaws! Chainsaws! In the fly! Oh, Chris, oh, man! Thanks for grabbing me. Yeah. Okay. You, can, you can piggyback and I'll chainsaws. Chainsaws! Oh my god, did you hear Alkali died in the fire? Oh my god, really? Yep, got chainsawed. In <laughs> the fire, by yeah. his mate. Des, Raging Inferno, what do you grab? Uh, three things? Three things. Uh, uh, yeah, well, obviously, first, my mate. Make sure uh, yeah, they okay. are safe. Uh, second, the doggo, because oh, you know, puppy. Puppy. she's going to be safe. And uh, passport, because if things are that terrible, I want to go back home. <laughs> oh! Uh, I gotta find my passport. <laughs> you should. <laughs> <laughs> no. Anyway, I know where it is in general. No, you don't! It's in that room. Okay, honestly, that's the best response I've given. Usually, it's in the house. That's usually the... So we funny. just did ta We didn't just do them. We did taxes. I do my taxes. I help Zandy with their taxes. We got the tax forms back. There's a very important piece of paper. I said, Zan, I will need this next year to do your taxes. Put this in a safe place. They literally pulled one of these. Okay. <laughs> and walked away. That's the important pile. Damn, that, that is not an important pile. There was unopened mail in that pile and a ham and 
cheese sandwich. That is not the important file. I have a filing cabinet. Everything I do is labeled on Excel. I am OCD to a level that I am not comfortable with. And then there's Zan. Hurricane Zanny wandering through the house, leaving a trail of lube on the hardwood floor because sometimes you just want to live in an ice skating rink. <laughs> That's a dolly three times a day, damn it. Anyway, something, things happen, you know? Things, sometimes things, things happen. happen yeah. So let me ask you another question. Where's your tax form? In the important file. There is no important file, Zan! <laughs> it's that room. It's the important file. The room! Oh my god, that is my office! Yeah. Oh. You think an office is? It's a pile of business. The office is not business. a pile of the pile, the pile of business. <laughs> Come on. Work with me here. I did work with you! I gave you the paper! I said I need this in a year! What are you gonna do with it? You started by putting it on your desk, I said no. You moved it to my desk! I, that's probably the best case scenario, but no! No! This is what you get for working with a cobalt. Huh. Ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, introducing to the stage our next guest, give it up for Citrine! Welcoming me on here, my friend. It's nice to have an inflatable and something hard in my hand. I love the way you do this. If you don't know uh, Satrina, Satrina is one of the amazing musicians that you can hear uh, right here at this weekend at IFC. They've been a furry musician since I've known them. It's been so fun. Uh, you have had some oh tearjerker songs. Oh, oh, oh. Here's to you, here's to you, son of a shit. Uh, yeah. Satrine yeah. has been performing at these cons. How long have you been performing at these cons? So, my very first convention ever was IFC 2014 at the Sheridan that I attended with a badge. That was my very first convention. This is number 40 now. Oh, Holy crap. Wow. Oh my god. Um, and I performed at that first convention. And luckily, Sober Gatamon wasn't recording the variety show, so that shit stain will not exist, and I'm happy about it. <laughs> now, you get to do a lot of performances uh, uh, in the convention now. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite one to perform in? Um, honestly, my favorite one is Who's Line, and I'll tell you why. It's because getting to do Who's Line, so there is a game that you introduced me to that's called Barfly, Bartender, what have you. And if you've ever seen the original Who's Line, it's... Basically an improv game. Somebody goes out, they get the topic, they come back, then a person has to sing that to me. I'm the bartender that doesn't get one shot, I get however many contestants you got, and I have to sing back the response to them. And I love that because that is literally how I write every single one of my songs. I have never sat down and been like, I'm going to take a whole night or I'm going to take a month or a year to write a song. I go and I record it on my little handheld recorder because the words come to me while shit is falling out my ass and you guys cry over it and I don't understand any of it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Des, you also, you've been doing improv with me for a very long time. Oh, yeah. You're also very into the singing games. I, 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 I do, I do. Can you remember uh, one of your big successes? Um, you've had, I mean, you've had a few just absolute. Like, song-wise? Yeah, mo yeah. Oh, probably the Christmas ones from First Square. Oh. <laughs> and as the Virgin. Oh. <laughs> I forgot about and as the Virgin. Holy shit! Humpity hump 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 Okay, I have been off on my times all weekend. We only have another uh, eight minutes here. Dear God. Wow. Sorry, oh, all right, Although, go back to the questions. Although, we might have said eight at eight, so we don't. Uh, no, we don't. Okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry, this is not professional. We are figuring out our panel schedule yeah. on stage. Yeah, that's entertaining. <laughs> uh, Citrine, we got to get you caught up. Okay. What Broadway play would you want to be a star in slash be a cast member of? 
be a star of and be a cast member of. I'm going to go, just because it's the first thing that came to mind, I'm going with Avenue Q. Oh, right. Mainly because I'm asexual and I can sing internet as for porn and it's ironic. <laughs> damn it, that's awesome. Alright, I'm gonna answer Avenue Q, I like that one. And also, there's a raging inferno in your house. What three things do you grab to save other than yourself? Well, if alkalize in my house, there's the raging inferno. It's yelling at me if I don't take it. <laughs> it's a raging inferno because I'm a flamer. Get over it. Oh, all right. I see how this is. <laughs> so three things I can grab. Um, well, I'm grabbing my porn stash. I'm not leaving that behind. <laughs> Last joke, asexual. This joke, porn stash. I love you. <laughs> Look, asexual means that, in my opinion, you don't, like, for me personally, it's that you don't have, se like, you're just not interested in the actual act of sex and the pleasure in yourself. It's like, cool, I don't have to, my needs. You know? <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. It's like, actually. okay, yeah. Um, let's see, second thing I would grab, um, I'm grabbing my guitar so I can ironically sing about my house burning because that's what I'm fucking good at. Nice. <laughs> um... You're going to serenade your burning house outside with the three things that you saved. Sitting there with a guitar, a stack of porn, and what else when the firefighters show up? Well, drama makes the best start. He, he's an ordinary guy burning down the house. It's pyro porn. <laughs> okay, now you're a suspect. <laughs> I can totally see him strumming his ear like, Hey there, bartender, don't call me a liar. It's I'm more than my pants that are on fire. <laughs> I can't help it, my dick's heart, it's my desire. It, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get a song called Pyro Dick, and it's going to be out at the next con. It's gonna be your fault. The uh, firemen are going to be so confused. So, uh, the I will thing. gladly sponsor no. Pyrodic. Okay, that's an, you heard it here, the name of the next album, Pyrodic. Cool. Please do not use my fucked up mind to name your albums. They're good at naming things. I'm good at horrifying the elderly. Okay, so you horrify the elderly, and I'll get the youth because Dick will we'll talk. We can basically hit all demographics here. Oh my god. What is the third item you're saving? <laughs> oh yeah. Um, so, the third item, if I have to think about it, honestly is going to be Snowflake's VR. And it's not because I even play the damn thing. It's because she plays it, and that keeps her from kicking my ass. It distracts her because I love you, honey. So I'll grab your VR, okay? <laughs> To sleep and sleeping with one I open doesn't do shit. I'm screwed. <laughs> Alright, so I just want to make sure I'm painting a picture here. The firefighters arrive to a blazing inferno. Uh -huh. You're out front strumming your guitar, singing about, I'm sorry, Pyro Dick. Is that what we decided? Yes. Excellent. A stack of porn next to you and Snowflake dancing around to Beat Saber in the middle of the street. They're passing your house up, buddy! Dude, okay, you said I'm beating my guitar. She's playing Beat Saber. If I don't have my guitar in the VR, I'm gonna be beating off to the porn. Okay, now the firefighters are stopping. I've seen their calendars. They're into this. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, both of neither, you're convention chairman. It's a work that never stops. Give it up for Lord Pandev. <laughs> Love you. Alright, we have one more question. The last question comes from Tikal. Thank you so much, Tikal. Tikal asks, what obscure TV show slash film slash video game would you most want to see get a remake? Okay. What was it? Reboot, reboot? Oh, I think I tried that maybe, actually. I think they did they reboot. Bring that up. Yeah. They rebooted, reboot, and it was bad, apparently. Yeah, yes. I got one. Well, yeah. Smurfs. Dark, gritty reboot. <laughs> Why not? Let's do it. After Dark Smurfs? 
I mean, it's basically Attack on Titan when I think about it, really, because like, he's trying to eat the little people, really. All but is that what Gargano time. was trying to do, eat them? I yeah. think so, right? I think that was the original plot, yeah. Gargano was trying to eat the Smurfs. Yeah. yeah. That was the original plot. Yeah. All right, well, now I know why all the furries well, are bored. That makes sense. Yeah. Plot twist, Gargano's just discovering that he's really into micros. Ha. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's the easiest one. <laughs> this explains where a lot of porn comes from, and a lot of people's fetishes come from. Cartoons, great. Yep, yeah, basically. Yeah. And who do we get to play Dar Gargamel? Danny DeVito! <laughs> oh my god, it all circles back! It's perfect! Anyway, he started blasting. Thursday night? Yeah? Yeah. Oh. Oh, he's blasting. What would you do? What would you remake? Anything? God. Here's the thing, I... I don't really know what I would have remade because I feel like a lot of the things that have been remade that okay you have to see you have to understand um, less than two years ago I lost my vision completely so like now I'm just catching up on everything because what I saw as a kid was blurred shit and now I get audio descript for this stuff. And so I'm just catching up on the originals so I've got 20 years of logging to go through. <laughs> And, I, and half the time that I think, oh, I'd like a reboot of this, they already made it, and it's straight to Netflix, or it's straight to Hulu or Disney+, Plus, and usually it's, uh, well, I won't say it's bastardizing it all the time, but flip a coin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they try to remake Fantastic Four how many times now? Uh, right? And it got uh, way worse. The one for me, just because I feel like it's time. Does there, are, does soap operas still exist? Is that yeah. a thing? Yes. Yeah. Daytime soap operas, they still exist? Yeah. Okay, good. Days of our lives. Days, okay, so days of, okay, good. In that case, this is still prevalent. There is an old show that I grew up on. Dear God, did I grow up on the show. It's called Soap. You know it! Yes. <laughs> you know it? So, uh, help me out with his name. Billy Crystal got his start on Soap as a gay ventriloquist. It is an over-the-top soap opera that is so convoluted and complicated, they end every single episode with a recap of all the nonsense that they're doing, and it was wildly funny. If you ever get a chance, Soap is a truly stupendous show, but it's still a show of the 80s. Help me out, 80s show, right? Oh, I think it's 70s, actually. Late 70s. Was it late 70s? It okay. Holy yeah. shit, I love that show. I want to see it redone with all everything that we've learned now. All the way that we do humor and dark gritty reboots because yeah, we do do a lot of reboots because we are totally out of ideas as a species yep. apparently. And you know, then we made everything anywhere all at once. So okay, we've got a few ideas left. But at the end of the day, we are very good at remaking things and to remake a comedy of the caliber of a spoof on a full genre, done to the point where sometimes it was so good that could actually elicit an emo emotional response from you, that's the show I want. So my answer is so, and that leads us to the end of time. Again, I thought we had an hour and a half, we only had an hour, so sorry about that. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, at the back of the room, we have set up our dealer's table. You don't need to buy anything, but we're going to be hanging out back there for a while. That being said, we will be selling Status's CD. Thank you so much, Status. Some of our merch, and just hanging out. If you want to join us, join us back there. If you want to buy something, let us know. Great. But that doesn't matter because just thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. If you want to watch us later, we're on Twitch.tv, Outline is Annie. So we stream four days a week. We have a schedule up. Our next stream will be Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. So until next time, let's let him hear it. They had to leave, but give it up for Lord Panda! Our wonderful guest, Citri! Until next time, I'm Alkali. I'm Danny. Thank you very much for being here, and good night. Silver Gato Man, he bought me a coffee. Silver Gato Man, here is the song for thee. He likes to video all the panels at the cons. 
You should go and watch them whether they are short or long. Zervagatoman, you video that's not a jibe. All of you go to his YouTube channel and like and subscribe.